little bit of umber in with my black so that it's not just a cold black. It's darker on this side, gets darker on this side. through here. And the nice thing about couching, which is what we're doing here, is yeah, it takes a little bit sometimes to control the paint, kind of figure out how all the mixtures are going to combine with each other. But the nice thing is, is that the blending is a piece of cake. Unlike a, mo the, a mosaic, when you're trying to create gradations using the mosaic, and you have to really work on blending to get the two areas together. When you're couching, as soon as you start, as soon as those, those two areas of paint touch each other, they're going to start to blend. And the problem then is being able to control it so that you end up with the color that you want and not just a muddy mix of everything that you're putting into it. Soften the edge. Right, so I can see the gradation. It's lighter here, and it starts to gradate darker as you get darker reflections around this. Whatever gradation is in here is clearly occurring in this area. I have not only the darker values around the outside edge, just soften my edges up here just a bit, but I can see there are lights, right? I probably had a, when I photographed this, this is probably the edge of a canvas or an easel that was sitting next to it. Probably had a wall over there. Now I can get the small brush out and start to line out some of these reflections, wet into wet. 7.31, ooh, we're on the clock. And of course, the other thing to keep in mind is three stages of the painting, fill, form, and finish, it doesn't necessarily mean you're going to get the whole thing done in one sitting. Again, the forming might take multiple passes to bring it up to the degree of completion or the degree of polish that you want. Polish meaning the degree of finish. You know, how, how much detail have I gotten in? Did I get in as much as I want? Do I want to get some more in? Or it could even be an issue here. Like when I'm starting to paint these lighter values wet into wet into that darker value, I'm couching them, they're mixing quite a bit. So I might find that no matter what I do here, that because these lighter values are mixing in, I'm not quite getting the value that I need. So I might need to let it dry and go back in just to do a clean pass in some of these reflections uh, once it's dry. So. Fill form finish by no means does that mean that, oh, all right, well, then three passes and I'm done for the night. Like, that's just all I have to do. Maybe it is, but maybe it's not, right? It might take another, it might take some reworking once it's dry uh, just to get better color interactions. Or maybe the drawing goes a little sideways. As I said, you have to control that as well. Could be any number of reasons why you just have to put the brush down at some point while you're working and get back into it once it's dry and clean up some things. So I notice on mine that I'm getting a lot of the green reflecting in on the outside edges. Almost to the point where the green at the edge is just about the same value as the green that's behind it. Very close. More chromatic in here. Lighten up this edge just a little bit. Seven thirty three. Now. I mentioned that first night's always tough because we have a lot of talking. Next week, I'm going to get into painting a lot faster so this pace will slow down a little bit. Let's 
do what you can tonight, including me. Do what I can. We will definitely at least have the opportunity to get all the way down to the bottom with the, let's just say it's the first forming pass, right? I know I'll be able to get all the way down because I'm almost there. Then I can take a look at what I did and start to figure out what needs to be done afterward. Darker value along this edge. And soften the edge, right? Of course, these reflections need to take on the shape of the object that they're on. They don't just have a random shape. They need to curve like they're on the object that we're looking at. In this case, they need to wrap around the belly of this chrome object. In the middle of the background in to clean this up. Clean up that edge a little bit. And we'll finally get into zone five. At least we touched some paint. I am not terribly concerned about, uh, if I don't get into this tonight, I'm not worried about that, the background or the cast shadow. So again, next week, it's going to be a lot easier to incorporate all of this because we're going to have more time. Now, I'm just going to focus on the object. Only after I have all this in, I'll start to put some of the highlights on the ribbing here. I just want to make sure I get down in here. So. At least got something going in here, right? Starting to turn that, get some of the reflections. I'm gonna have to couch lighter paint in here, but as I said, I'm gonna move on down, start to turn this. I started with the darker or lighter paint and then couched in the highlight. I can see there's green reflecting in on this side to the gray. It gets a little bit darker over there. dark cast shadow that I didn't put in initially under here. Certainly darkens up right through here just a bit more. Got the green reflecting in over on this side. Nice thing when you start making your initial paint puddles, like if you make a good amount, good healthy amount of paint, in these puddles, then you can always kind of go back to them as necessary. You don't have to remix. opportunity now. I got at least something moving in there. Fine tune the drawing a little bit. I think the base here is just a hair too thick in some areas, but again, I'm not going to stress even more time. I could clean that up. No problem. Get this front plane in. It touches the tabletop. Bring in some more of these green highlights on the edge. The only reason I'm going to touch the tabletop is just to refine the drawing just a little bit. Just a touch for the time being. <clears throat> 